Now let's talk about results right up front. Uh, what you're seeing behind me is a result of just an aeration and overseeding wet Mountain View seed uh, cultivars. Uh, so last fall, this is now about 11 months old, just shy of a year. Uh, last fall, we went down with the aeration and overseeding uh, at a good rate. Um, I will show uh, some pictures of what this looked like before, but there was almost no good usable turf back here. Um, it was mainly just weeds and that was about it. And this is a non-irrigated. Uh, so even throughout last fall, there was no watering to help it get established. Uh, so it was just fending for itself and these are the results that we got. Throughout last fall, there were two fertilization applications down that uh, gave us about a pound and a half of nitrogen that went down. Uh, and then coming into the spring, uh, it got another two applications uh, with another pound and a half. And this has been very minimal uh, back here in the back. The last feeding on this, you can tell it's a little bit hungry, but the last feeding of it was back in May of this year. Nothing else has gone on back here. Uh, the client actually wanted a very minimal, just make it better. I think this is pretty good for better. This lawn's only going to continue to get better year over year. I tell you, the number one goal of starting a new lawn or improving your lawn is to carry as much healthy turf into the year two as possible because it's only going to get better from that point on. So now that you've seen the results of overseeding and you've made a decision that you want to do an overseed on your lawn, now let's get into the details of exactly what you need to be doing. Because that your spring and summer of 2024 lawn starts this fall, not next year. So the first thing is going to be timing. I get asked this question a lot. When should I put down my seed? When should I do this? When should I do my overseeding? Uh, well, that's going to depend uh, for everybody and it's going to really be dependent on your location and the weather pattern. And you know, the weather pattern is not very consistent and it's subject to change. So uh, a rule of thumb is you need about 30 to 45 days for a cool season grass type, except for KBG, which takes a little longer. You need about 30 to 45 days for that seed to mature and you to get a couple of cuts on it and it to be ready uh, to go into the fall and handle uh, those freezes that come during the winter. Uh, so if you want to be safe, look up your first frost date, back that date up 30 days from then, that should be your window for overseeding. Um, and again, you've got to also monitor your weather patterns. Right now, I love to do mine actually during September. Uh, normally this Labor Day weekend is when I do my uh, overseeding, but uh, we're about to be in a heat wave in the mid and upper 90s, 95, 96, 97 degrees. I'm not gonna put seed on the ground and try to battle that uh, type of weather conditions. So given that current weather pattern, I'm just gonna hold off another week. We've got plenty of growing season left. Um, there's no need to rush it. So you really only need 30 to 45 days and you'll be good. The next thing is gonna be an overall list of materials. And remember, you can go extreme or you can go very basic. Um, and I'm just gonna give you your bare bone necessities of what you're gonna need uh, for doing an overseed. Uh, the first thing is gonna be uh, a mower. Um, the next thing you're gonna need is a high quality seed. And when we talk about a high quality seed, y'all know where I'm gonna go, Mountain View Seed Cultivars. Um, uh, it pays dividends of buying a high quality seed um, that is going to be the future of your lawn and it is going to be there for the longevity. Um, making sure that you are picking a high quality seed from the start will uh, reduce your inputs later on. It will give you the color you need without having to force the plant with additional products. And it also improves uh, the drought resistance and disease resistance uh, with those Mountain View seed cultivars. So uh, make sure you are spending the money, the effort and the time um, to pick out those high quality seeds. Uh, the next thing is gonna be, you're gonna need a spreader. 
Um, you can use a hand spreader, you can use a drop spreader, a broadcast spreader, uh, depending on how much square footage you uh, have. Make sure you're picking out the right tool there to get your seed spread. And the next thing is also going to be a fertilizer. Uh, it doesn't have to be a starter fertilizer. You know I always recommend getting a soil test and knowing what nutrients are in your soil. So if you've already got plenty of phosphorus already in your soil, you do not have to put down additional phosphorus just because you're doing an overseeding. Uh, if you are low in phosphorus, now would be a time during the seeding to make sure you put down some phosphorus uh, with your overseeding. The one thing that I always get asked during this time of year is where can I buy the seed? Where can I get the seed from? Well, I've got some new information for you. Uh, Y'all know I've been rocking with Mountain View Seed Cultivars for about three years now, going on four. Um, and that's what I've been planning and I've had amazing results and I stand by it. Uh, so now I can announce to you that uh, Pete Denning down there at GCI Turf Academy down in North Carolina uh, is running his new seed with all Mountain View Seed cultivars in it. And what that means is you're getting titanium, which is the highest rated um, seed cultivar uh, is in fescue for the transition zone. And you're getting two other great Mountain View Seed cultivars that I also have in my lawn. Uh, so you all ask me what cultivars do I have, which ones? Well, the three that are in uh, Pete's new seed blend are in my backyard. So um, that is uh, a new opportunity for you to be able to pick that seed up. Uh, I'll leave links down in the description so you can go check that seed out. First step is making sure that we're getting good seed to soil contact. We wanna bring down our height of cut. Uh, say you have an existing lawn that's in pretty good condition, you can normally just bring that down to around two and a half inches and you'll be fine. If you have a lawn that has a very little desirable turf in it, you can bring that height of cut down lower because you wanna get that good seed to soil contact and also make sure uh, that seed is receiving enough sunlight because that's really what you want to get up and grown. And one optional uh, tool that you can get and that's gonna be a dethatcher or a power rake. After you've brought down your height of cut, this is when you can bring in the optional step of doing a power rake or dethatch. That's gonna bring up all of some of the excess debris uh, that you've got down in your lawn uh, that may just be sitting on that surface. Uh, so you wanna get that up and expose some of that soil underneath. That way when that seed that you put out uh, falls down in through that canopy, it's able to contact the soil uh, and that's what it's gonna need for establishment. Not necessarily germination, but that's what it needs to establish. The next step is gonna be for us uh, to get out and put our seed down. Uh, you can use any of the tools that I've recommended. Uh, when you're going down with your seed, you wanna make sure that you're picking the appropriate rate for you to go down. So if you've got an established lawn, pretty good condition, you normally can go around three to five pounds per thousand square feet for your overseeding rate. Uh, and at that point, you're not gonna add in too much seed and cause overcrowding. Uh, this is the point of where people create their problems for next year by adding too much seed. With too much seed, you get overcrowding, um, you reduce the airflow through there, which then increases your disease pressure the following year. If you've got a lawn uh, that's pretty thin and doesn't have a lot of good turf in there, you can go up towards a higher rate or if you're doing a bare ground seeding. Uh, so I would recommend if you're going with the Mountain View Seed cultivars, which are lateral spread type cultivars, uh, at a maximum, I would go around eight pounds per thousand. Uh, this is gonna be my personal recommendation. Uh, a lot of times you'll see recommendations up to 10 pounds per thousand on bare ground seeding. What I've experienced with that eight pounds per thousand on the lateral spread type cultivars is it allows enough airflow through the canopy of the lawn that following year so that there's less disease pressure. Um, so that way, as I mentioned earlier in the video, you carry as much healthy turf from year one into year two. Um, so don't create your problems for next year 
by overcrowding and planting too much seed. Uh, do not try to go too thick, too fast. You will regret it. After we've got the seed down, um, this is where it kind of comes optional. Uh, you can either uh, put your fertilizer down now uh, at the time of seeding, have everything down and you can just sit back and watch the water go. Or you can now wait um, maybe until that seed has actually germinated. So giving it another week or so and then coming back down with your fertilizer uh, and adding that to the soil. Uh, honestly, I like to get all of mine done at the same time get that uh, fertilizer down with the seed, it starts to break down and get into the soil. So by the time that seed germinates, that fertilizer is starting to get into the soil for it to be able to uptake it uh, with the roots that it's starting to put down. Now, the fertilizer is on the ground and it's time to sit back for the final step of this process and that's gonna be watering. Watering is going to be key for this process. Uh, to make any of this work, you have to have water. Um, and this is one of the things that I say, uh, pay attention to your weather pattern. Uh, if you're not gonna be watering and you're not irrigated uh, in your lawn, make sure you see some rain uh, chances in your forecast coming up because your seed is not going to germinate unless it has adequate soil moisture for that to happen. If you are going to be watering or you do have an irrigated lawn, you are gonna be watering multiple times a day. Uh, it's hard to put a number on it because every irrigation system is different, everybody's setup is different, um, but I can say you will be watering multiple times during the day. It may be anywhere from three times a day up to five times a day. Um, your goal is gonna be to make sure you keep this seed moist and it contains uh, moisture for the next three weeks is, is what I would say. And by that point, you've allowed all of your seed to germinate, uh, especially if you're dealing with KBG, which is why I said up to three weeks, which takes a little longer for it to germinate and start to establish. You normally can give it about three weeks or so, um, and it's gonna be probably about time for your first cut. Uh, a lot of times I like to get on my lawns a lot earlier than most. Uh, normally after about two weeks, I'm on back on my lawn at least cutting it once a week uh, to make sure that when that seed starts to come up uh, and starts to get a little bit of growth on it, I'm hitting it with that blade. Once it starts getting that blade on it, there's something magical that happens with grass once it gets its first cut. At that point, the lawn will start to tiller out more. You'll start to get more leaf blades on it and it'll start to thicken up. So uh, the sooner you can get back on the lawn, if you've got a push mower or something light, make sure you get on the lawn, you get it cut and you get off of it. No stripe kits, no rollers, none of that. You just go out there, get it cut, and get off of it as, with as least traffic on it as possible. I hope you all are taking this opportunity to get out there, either do an overseed or a full renovation if that's what you've been working on. Um, because your 2024 lawn starts now. It's time to check in and get the work done so that you can experience the benefits of it this fall and next spring and years to come in your lawn. All right, y'all, as I always say, just know, we work.